Let, let me throw a couple things at you before your next question. Kwame Brown, ex-basketball player, the bus. Hopefully this make your channel get a million views. You know, the basketball player, number one draft pick that wasn't shit in the NBA. Man, he got like 150,000 viewers. He just started his fucking channel like six days ago. Dogs, I was watching him yesterday. He had like 23,000 people in the chat. See he what was I'm getting saying? 50s, 100s, 10s, 20s. Niggas is donating like motherfuckers. You know what I'm saying? He had like 5,000 likes. I was like. He got a new career, bro, overnight. Son, you know what I'm saying? That, that, that's crazy because I was just going to put you because I just kind of finished asking you the questions about your life. So I was gonna put you in the hot seat for a second. And that was one of the questions. Kwame Brown, MVP or bust. You know what I'm saying? Because he's been lighting motherfuckers up online. And in my opinion, he's the real fucking MVP right now. You know what I'm saying? And basically you would agree. I absolutely agree. Ain't no basically. I agree. I agree that he's a bust, and I agree that he's the MVP right now. Most definitely, and, son. And, and I'm gonna keep it real. You know what I mean? I was I was never a Matt Barnes fan. After his after his career, I began to feel Matt Barnes. He a real, you know, the N word. He a real one. I like dude. I like his swag. I like how he pop his shit. And don't turn down no phase, but. Kwame Brown, Kwame Brown got in his ass. You know what I mean? Kwame, like, you sit up on this motherfucker all day bashing black men. He Let's hit talk him with about that real. Hit him with that real. I just did a video. I said, instead of worrying, Kwame came at both of them like Steven Jackson. Put the blunt down, pull your fucking pants up, and start representing black men properly. Get off that bullshit. And you, Becky with the good hair. <laughs> Yo, you better start worrying about your family. What the fuck is Matt Barnes? Is he the mentor? Is he the stepdad? And I was like, that's some real shit because you worried about me. Your head coach is dicking your wife down and teaching your kids the backstroke. They chilling in the pool. You know what I mean? But you over here worried about me. I'm still worth like eight, 10, 12 million dollars. I still get my little pension. You see my YouTube channel just blew the fuck up. I'm possibly doing the same amount of numbers as y'all niggas is doing view wise on your little podcast. So now imagine if I start getting in your ass, you know what I'm saying? And really talking my shit. I seen the Charlemagne send him a cease and desist letter, you saw that. Oh, that's what that was? Yeah, basically to shut his shit down. So do you think Kwame should keep pushing forward and popping that shit? Or do you think he should take his newfound fame and status and create a podcast to start making that money? No, he definitely should keep going forward. Start a podcast and I'm sure there'll be some people that'll get behind him for advertisement and all that shit. Uh, he might get some new endorsements um, because he's really, he's really speaking facts, homie. I mean, he's really saying shit that other athletes won't say. Um, so he's thinking outside the box and straightforward. I love it. I'm not a Kwame Brown fan. I probably was the first. I, I know this ain't true, but I'm going to say, I probably was the first one to say he was a bust and wasn't shit. You know, from his first basketball game, I was like, saying what the shit. fuck? Yeah, little small ass hands, can't even palm the ball and shit. Always fumbling the ball under the basket. I'm a Laker fan, so motherfucker, you ain't shit to me if you can't get us. You no can't championship. box out, you can't rebound, you got no post game, none of that. None of that. But it is what it is. Again, I'm not hating on the brother um, because I was speaking on his career and I, I stick to what I said. I like the fact he came back shooting at Stephen A. Smith and Matt Barn, man. I think he should continue to do it, and probably he should wait because he's finna get a million followers. Mm. So he should go on, get the million followers, and then go on and create something bigger and better. I'm sure but they he could ask get... until you got the 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 the, the audience, man, and then let... go off and do something a little different. Exactly. On top of it. Now, this might sound funny. I might be putting too much on it, but I'm telling the truth. Once he get a podcast, get him a co-host. He don't even need a regular co-host. He can use different people. The way you talk your shit, he can have you come on and talk some shit with him. And there's other, 
There's other people that'll come on and talk some shit with him. Probably a Allen Iverson or Mike Tyson. Oh, that would be dope. That would be real dope. And and so I think I think it would be a great idea. Allen Iverson's always been an outspoken hood nigga. Love him. Keep it real. Yeah. Love him because his mom. My my respect for Allen Iverson. Of course, you gotta love him at Georgetown, but little shit talking thug, little motherfucker. Look like he crying all the time and shit. But once he said, once he got at Michael Jordan, like Jordan ain't shit. Like he's just another basketball player. That earned my respect right there. And then you know he hit him saying? with that cross, that bop, bop, boom. Oh, that was awesome. That was that awesome. That was legendary, son. Yeah, it wasn't nothing like Allen Iverson. I don't even think he had the braids at the time when he hit him with the cross. He just nah, had a little throw, if I'm not and, mistaken. And, and like how you say he's outspoken, I like when he was on uh, Slam Magazine, I think. Mm -hmm. um, I got the magazine right there. I'm not sure if it was Slam, though. But they, they didn't want him to show us tattoos. He like, man, what the fuck? These are my tattoos, you know what I'm saying? The cornrow, all of that. So I, I, I like Oprah, Oprah. Bitch. AI is the truth. Yeah, now nah, I fucks with AI. Now, um, I ain't so Kwame Brown. Shout out to you, son. Let's get a motherfucking interview with you next. You know what I mean? Keep talking your shit. Get up in these niggas' chest. Do it strategically. Get your million followers and then go out there because he was talking about doing community activities and building shit up. Get that shit popping and then go off in that direction. So mm -hmm. that was dope. Now, this is a juxtaposition right here. Umar Johnson, poor righteous teacher or motherfucking fraud in your opinion and why? He was in the casino last night gambling, talking about he got to hit the million dollar jackpot to get the money for FDMG. You know what I'm saying? And then I guess he ain't hit. And he was like, you know, the ancestors, the ancestors don't want me to get the money that way. I was just <laughs> like, yo, this dude, man. Well, well hang on the thing. Hang on the thing, bro. Because I know you don't know me like that. I have no idea who you even talking about. So I, I'm oblivious to the whole situation. Let's move on to the next joint. After the fact, you'll go check him out. And then maybe we'll do like a follow up, not just specifically for that, but you know, you see who he is. We tap back in a little later on down the line and then bada bing, bada boom. Now, Charleston White, you might oh, know the name. Man. Evil genius or fucking loose cannon? Shit, he's both. Um, definitely an evil genius. Most definitely. Uh, I I, I want to say, I want to say he falls under the clout chasing category, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't say it like most clout chasers. Mm-hmm. Because he 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 really goes in on different people, so he's not trying to come up of one person or one incident. He just bashes everybody. He say what the hell is on his mind. The only only issue I got with Mister White is if you listen to the shit he talk, the shit he be popping. He's very what's the word? Uh, hypocritical. Mm. Very, very, very hypocritical, you know. Uh, I almost want to say he's just a genius. Yeah, well, he knows how to flip his words, even if he doesn't believe what he's saying, or he just contradicted what he just said and make other motherfuckers believe it. He's down with that pimp shit. It's all about yeah. the game, baby. Yeah. Well, the thing for me is, um, I wind up realizing that he's illiterate, he can't read, mm. and I was like. You know, y'all here motivating people. You got people behind you. Whether you say crazy things that I don't agree with all the time or not, you definitely got a squad that's behind you. So imagine if Malcolm X couldn't read. Imagine if Martin Luther King Jr. couldn't read. Like, how far would their message go? And like, like as a community, how could we endorse an illiterate motherfucker to raise the babies? and to right. guide the women properly. When right. you can't even read the babies of fucking ABCs, sing them a fucking lullaby. You know what I'm saying? You can't even read or write or 
put some shit together for your lady and tell her you love her. <laughs> but on a personal note, like, but we supposed to sit up here and listen to everything you gotta say and take it as you're the Messiah now. So there's a lot of things that he said that I said, wow, this dude's different. I gave him props. He was talking about um, a little boy that his brother got murdered and the little boy got a big song now, you know, whatever. But when he was 13, he snitched on the person that killed his brother because his mother told him. So Gilly the Kid, like all these rappers, they were getting at him like, oh, this nigga on some bullshit, no snitching, no snitching, you know, the bullshit street code that niggas never even really lived through in their fucking life. <clears throat> but now it applies to a little boy who's not making gang music, not making tough music. He got a little silly song, with niggas dancing, little girls and stuff like that. And he's trying to live his life and he never portrayed himself as a street person. You're supposed to be a hardcore criminal at 13. I mean, some of us might beg to differ. You know what I mean? Uh, uh, depending on what we grew up in. But the average 12, 13 year old growing up at home with mama, with grandma, eating Sunday dinners, having a good time, going to church and growing up with ethics, principles and morals. Them little motherfuckers ain't no hardcore criminals. Like, oh, my brother's dead. I'm going to go. You know what I'm saying? Smoke everybody and avenge his death now. Fuck, is this a video game or something? So when he huh. spoke out and put motherfuckers on blast, I was like, oh, shout out to you, son. That's some real shit right there. And I agree with you, you know what I mean? But then I saw him coming with the Asian hate. You know, I fuck with my nigga China Mac. I fuck with a lot of uh, Asian people in my city. I grew up in the Lower East Side. Chinatown is right there. So I went to school with Asians, all type of different people. And I know how some of the older folks can be because they're coming over from China where they have a totalitarian system and a whole different government and a way of thinking and believing no God, like communist, there's a whole different approach. And you're now you're mixing these cultures together. You know what I'm saying? And we're trying to do business and do this and that. So I understand there's gonna be differences, but to just come out and blanket motherfuckers and be like, fuck that, fuck this. I was like, nah, son, I can't coach you. I can't co-sign that because I'm for everybody as long as you good. I don't give a fuck. You can be white, purple, blue, black. I don't give a shit. If you're a good person and you on the right side of things, I'm chilling. But if you're another motherfucker that's over here trying to fake the funk, I can't endorse that. Back in the days, I was selling mad motherfucking weed. This Jamaican nigga always used to, you know what I mean? Be in my ear telling me shit. I used to read up from him and what? He said, yo, Nick, one day he told me, watch out for the black devils. And I was like, what? <laughs> I thought the devil was white. Now you got me running from cops. You got me running from the white devil, the stick up kids, other niggas hating on me. And there's a black devil too. God damn, son. I was like, oh shit. So, you know, evil comes in all shapes, forms, sizes, and colors. You know what I'm saying? But at the end of the day, the beautiful thing about history is you don't want history to repeat itself. Exactly. So you got to be mindful of where we came from to understand where we want to go. And that's why I was saying about my interviews, I come from that culture. So I understand where we come from and definitely where we should be going, uh, especially pertaining to specifically the fucking gang interview. I know where your hood started. I, you know, some hoods I don't, but, and, and I know where y'all at today. So go on, give us your positive message on why these kids shouldn't be doing the same shit you did back when we thought it was cool. Times are different. And, and as we get older, we mature and we think different. So go on and get that knowledge to the kids.